two different scenarios for me. One is recording and one is performing. Uh, they're pretty similar, actually. Uh, this is a traditional instrument, but it's been completely rewired. Uh, I have a Bartolini pickup here, just one pickup. This is only appears to be a pickup. This is actually a buffer preamp, which lowers the impedance and gives you a much cleaner sounding output. Most of the knobs and switches and everything are disconnected here. So this is just real straight, simple, clean signal path. My style has become one of uh, sort of being the one-man band, or the one-man orchestra. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of independent bass lines while, the, while I'm walking chords, as well as uh, various kind of percussive things. You'll hear this kind of undercurrent in my playing all the time. You know, the backbeat, the sort of universal backbeat, or not, not necessarily always that, but there's a lot of percussive, I call it a subtext. Uh, it's, and it's, it's a kind of subliminal thing that gives a lot of drive and pulse and impact to the music that's not there if you just play. That doesn't quite have the life of it. But one of the most useful things I have to offer, I think, and it's not original, uh, I got it from a friend of mine, Terry Saunders, who's a wonderful funk player, but it's the concept of left-hand staccato. And so it's a kind of overriding principle uh, that you can use no matter what you're playing. In other words, if you're playing a scale, you can apply this. If you're playing chords, any kind of part that you're playing, you can apply it. The conventional wisdom is you want to hold hold a chord as long as you can, or hold a note as long as you can, and connect it to the next note and make it very, what's called legato. Or maybe you hammer on and... This is all legato playing. That's, that's the kind of natural and automatic thing that we do on guitar. And what I'm talking about is the reverse, a very staccato approach, and a kind of martial arts approach. So it ends up sounding like... It ends up sounding like that, and when I talk about the martial arts approach, you can kind of see it from this angle. Uh, I'm doing what I picture as a little kind of karate chop into the fingerboard with every stroke. You'll see, it reminds me somewhat of the IBM ball on the old typewriters. Uh, the goal is to instantaneously nail it, hit it really hard, and bounce off. You notice I'm not bouncing very far off either. I'm bouncing only enough. My fingers aren't actually leaving the strings. But I'm hitting it really forcefully. And what it does is it ups the intensity of your playing a great deal and uh, increases your speed. And it opens up this whole side of, of the music that's not, not a really natural thing. So, for example, if you get into a, a funky kind of strumming thing, you might hear somebody going, uh, uh, maybe you've got a pattern like that. This is kind of a legato approach. You can see I'm, I'm coming off the chords now and then. But that's very different from this. Where each chord has a completely separate articulation. Where even if I didn't strum, you'd hear, I'll mute the strings down here. Uh, very, very valuable and powerful technique. So rather than a specific thing, I'll make myself play everything I do very staccato, really aggressively. The reality of how I warm up is most of the time I don't get to. Most of the time it's back to the cold plunge because of the realities of life. Uh, there's something happening right until showtime and all of a sudden you're walking on stage and you just have to be ready. But uh, when I have my own way about it, then I, of course I love to be kind of warmed up and, and also have my mind just nice and relaxed into, into playing. And so I'm not, I'm not saying don't do that, I'm just saying be ready because a lot of the time you don't get to do that. When I do get to do that, I'll tend to play really somewhat along, things along the lines of what I was just saying. I'll do a lot of changes of chords and I'll do it really staccato. Or maybe I'll play 
something that's that's got a few parts. Uh, you can hear I'm playing real, really staccato. Everything's staccato. See, there's a lot of real staccato. Again, I think of it as this kind of martial arts, martial arts approach. It's always easy to look at another instrument for inspiration. I went through a long period where I would look at a guitar player for inspiration, and I just gobbled up every guitar player's playing that I could. Uh, and I mean, I recommend it. It's it's a thing to do. You know, I took entire George Benson, Wes Montgomery albums, Jimi Hendrix albums, uh, note for note. You know, learned Eddie Van Halen solos, everything, flamenco, everything I heard that I didn't know how to do. I sat out and figured out how to do it as best I could, even when it would take me literally years to get it. Uh, so that's that's a great thing to do. But at some point, most of the guitar vocabulary starts to be familiar. Anytime you get stuck, you could listen to almost any keyboard player in the world. And I, I used to do this thing of just randomly, back when it was a turntable, I'd just put the needle down randomly on an Arc Tatum record. Great solo pianist. Uh, maybe the greatest jazz pianist, who knows. Uh, and just put it on for about two or three seconds. And if I ever started thinking, gee, you know, I pretty much got it all covered, and gee, I don't have anything to do, you know, I'm bored, what should I do today? Put that on and say, oh, well, let's, you know, could you do any of that? And the answer is always no, but it, it in, in my case, would drive me to try to figure out some way to evoke some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. 